Linux uses users and groups to identify ownership of files and also to use to do permissions. Here we have a Linux machine. And we'll look at some of the users and groups and how this all works. So if I cat out, use cat to take a look at the contents of the etc passwd password file, I can see all these users and groups in there. Now, some of these users and groups are real users. Uh, some of these are just system processes running. The Alice user, which you probably don't see, is up near the top portion, is a normal standard user. The rest of these are all um, user names for services. So if I wanted to create additional users, I can use the user add command. So if I type in the man user add, it will tell me the options. So in order to create a user, you can use these different options. Um, the best one to use is the minus C option to make sure that your user is, well, has some kind of a comment. So I have an Alice user right now. And I want to create Bob and a few other people. So I user add minus C. And maybe Bob's name is really Robert. And tell the username with Bob. That would create the user account. Do user add minus C Charles. And maybe the name matches except it's best to keep the usernames lowercase. You can have the description or the comment capitalized, that's fine, but make sure the description of the actual username is lowercase. All right. So I'm going to create some users. All right, so now I have some users there. If I want to look at these users and look at their information. I can use an ID command. So if I do ID Alice, I can see that Alice is UID 1000 with a GID of 1000. So her user ID number is 1000. Her group ID number is 1000. The groups that she is part of is the one that she is part of. I mean, that's her own, which is 1000, and the wheel group. The wheel group is special in that it is basically where all of your system administrator type people are. Usually the wheel group gets tied to the sudo command. So if you use the sudo sudo command, then you have to be in the wheel group or actually root in order to run it. All right. So now Bob, if I look at Bob, ID Bob, he is just in the Bob group. If I wanted to add him to the Bob into the wheel group, I could add him. So there is a user mod command. So let's take a look at the user mod command. So if I do man user mod, I can see I can modify a user. Now the group that he is part of, there's two different things. There's the minus lowercase g and there's the minus capital G. The minus lowercase g is your primary group. So Bob is in the Bob group. If I wanted to add him to the wheel group, it would be as a supplementary group. So I'm going to add him to the wheel group. So do user mod minus G wheel Bob. So now if I look at it, use the ID command to look at Bob again, I can see that Bob is now still in the Bob group, but he's also in the wheel group. So how does this all work? Well, let's look at some of the files behind this. If I take a look at less, just so I can scroll through things, etc, passwd, password file, I can see all of these users right here. Down at the bottom, you see Bob. There are a couple of columns here. Um, Bob, then a colon, then X, then a colon, 
then a number, then a colon, then a number, then a colon, then a description or a comment, then a colon, then a home directory, then a colon, then a shell, the default shell he uses. So the first one is his name, the username. The second one is his password. X means that it jumps over into the shadow file for his actual password. The next, the first number right there is his user ID number. Then after that is the group ID number, then his comment, his home directory, and his shell. So, all right. But what about the other groups? Well, that's actually in a group file. So it'll get less PC group. There we go. And I can scroll down and you can see that there's all these different groups. And you can see right there, there's a wheel group right there at the top now. Wheel is group number 10 and Alice and Bob are now both part of it. You could manually go in and edit this file right here and put additional people here at the end just do a comma and the next user. If you get down to the very right bottom, you'll see um, Bob, Charles, Dave, and Eve are all members of these groups, but it doesn't list them as members because that's their primary group. And what we usually see after the last colon there is the people who have it as a supplementary group. All right, now let's take a look at where the passwords are actually stored. So that's stored in the shadow file. So less PC shadow. Now, you probably don't remember me creating any passwords for any of these users. And if we get down here, you can see that Alice has a very long string up there where she has this um, dollar six, dollar F, some, all these different things. What we, you see there in this, that, the line right there is the dollar six dollar kind of indicates which method we're using for encrypting the passwords. They're hashed, and so you can't reverse them. And then from that second dollar to the third dollar is a bunch of data, which is probably the salt. Salt is used to mix in there to make sure that the keys don't all generate the same hash, or the passwords don't generate all the same hash. And then after that is the rest of the password. So if I wanted to create a password for Bob, Charles, Dave, and Eve, I could do that it's using PASSWD, Bob. Now when I'm creating a password for Bob, as root, I can set any password I want. I could even set it to be Bob. It won't like it and it'll complain about it, but I can still set it Bob again, and it will set the password. Now if I go look at the shadow file again, scroll to the bottom, you can see that Bob now has a password. That password Bob converted to that really long string there. And the string includes, in addition to just the password, it also includes things like how long the password lasts, when it was created, and things like that. Okay, so now Bob has a password, and Bob can log into the system. When the Bob user is created, it should, it usually goes and creates a home directory for Bob. So if I look at home, I can see that Bob has a home directory. And you look at Bob's directory, he's never logged in, but he already has stuff in his directory. And the reason the stuff is there is because it is in the etc scale directory. So I look at the etc scale directory, and you can see these are the files that get put into new user accounts when they are created. If I added extra files into this etc scale directory, then any new users created after those changes would get those new files. Existing users will not get anything new because they're not being recreated. But this is where you put it. So if you wanted them to always have a public HTML folder in their directory, you go into the scale directory, add a public HTML folder, and then every time you create a new users, it would automatically be generated and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Anyway, this is how you set up and create that. Um, and that's how you create users. If I wanted to then delete users, I can use the user del command. So maybe I don't want the eve user anymore. So I do look at the user del. And we have a couple of options. Um, this will delete a user name, but sometimes you want to remove their file contents and sometimes you don't. So I'm going to try removing one and not removing another one so we can compare. So I do user del 
minus R Eve. And that gets rid of Eve and it should remove her home directory. Go to user Dell and Dave without the minus R option. It should not delete his home directory. So if I take a look at the, the, the home directory, you can see that Dave has a directory still, which is not owned by any user, and Eve does not have a directory anymore. <clears throat> if a new user is created, it will use the next available ID number. So that means that Dave's number will probably get recycled. So if I were to recreate a new user, user add um, somebody else, let's see, um, Fred. Now, if I take a look at the home directory, you can see that Fred got the same ID number that Dave had. And so Fred is now listed as the owner for both the Fred directory and the Dave directory. So if you don't want this to happen, it's best to change the ownership of the Dave directory when you delete the user. So I go to home, I do a ch own, and I can change it to root and group root for Dave, and I do a minus R for recursive, and then it will change it to all be owned by root. And that saves you from this problem of having user IDs get recycled and used and mess things up, but you still have to be able to find all the files that are tied to that. And this is how you create, modify, and delete user directories, and also how you can change ownership of files that have been created.